Mackenzie Johnston with Cattle News Central, bringing you your March 7th cattle industry headlines. Brought to you by AgRisk Advisors. They provide risk management programs to livestock producers all across the West. Whether you are concerned about price or weather risk, AgRisk Advisors, they are here to help. With current day market fluctuations, there is nothing more important than locking in a price floor on your cattle. So if you would like to learn more about an LRP, go ahead and reach out to an advisor today. Also sponsored by American Beef Producer Magazine. They offer in-depth articles on a wide variety of topics within our industry. They feature award-winning photography and so much more within their publication. If you'd like to check out their most recent edition, their March edition, all you got to do is click on the American Beef Producer link above in the caption. That will take you over to their Facebook page where you can check that out. American Beef Producer Magazine, guiding beef producers for over 25 years. And finally, Circle 5 Cow School. If you are wanting to learn how to prep check your own cows or start AIing, Circle 5 Cow School is the way to go. Almost every week, they are hosting classes somewhere between Texas and Tennessee. If you'd like to check out their schedule, all you got to do is venture on over to their website, circle5cowschool.com. That is the number five in there. Or if you'd like, you can just go ahead and give them a follow on Facebook. According to National Beef Wire, Cornelis Keys Huzinga has been farming in central Ukraine for 20 years, where he and his family run a modern dairy and produce onions, carrots, wheat, barley, canola, sugar beets, corn, sunflowers, and navy beans. Cornelis knew that when he decided to be a farmer, he would have to wage a figurative war on traditional foes of food production, such as weeds, pests, and disease. He never thought that he would find himself in an actual war zone with a lethal enemy like Russia. When bombs started dropping over a week ago and the roar of rockets were heard overhead, his wife and kids fled. Uh, They fled the farm and sought safety with a friend in Romania, where Cornelis stayed on the farm. Cornelis is calling the governments of the world to step in and help stop this reckless war that has been waged by Vladimir Putin, a cruel and power-hungry authoritarian. Since the end of the Cold War and the breakup of the Soviet Union, Ukraine has strived to live in peace and harmony with the wider community of nations, according to Cornelis. On his farm, Cornelis and his family milk 2,000 head of dairy cows every day. It is obviously winter over there right now, but he has started fertilizing some of his fields, and he was planning to start planting the end of this month or the beginning of April. But since this war has broken out, he isn't sure if any of his crops will be planted this year. And he also isn't sure how he's going to continue to feed his cows. He obviously has food right now, feed right now available for his cows. However, uh, in the near future, he's uncertain as to if that will be available. He said that things are bad right now in Ukraine, which is obvious, but they will get much worse if Ukrainian farmers like himself can't get to work, which of course he is referring to short food, excuse me, food shortages around the world. Cornell is closed by saying that if Ukraine drops out of the global market, food prices will increase even more than what we're already seeing. This means that Russia's unprovoked war on Ukraine is not only is not only Ukraine's problem, it is also a threat to everyone around the world. KRVN News out of Lexington, Nebraska has reported that the Cargill plant down in Schuyler, Nebraska has been granted a regulatory waiver by the USDA that will allow the plant's employees to perform several critical safety inspections instead of having federal inspectors on site. This transition is set to start this week and full implementation will begin the week of May 2nd. The Schuyler plant is only the second beef plant to be granted permission uh, to have its own employees do inspections. Food and Water Watch senior attorney Zach Corrigan said that transferring these critical inspection duties to plant employees is fundamentally dangerous to consumers. Pork plants that switched to this system saw a twofold increase in violations for contaminations, contamination of fecal matter and digestive contents. Corrigan realizes that this is only one plant, but it is the second plant for a program that the Biden administration plans to implement for the entire industry. He closed by saying that consumers are already having to deal with outrageous prices at the meat counter due to industry consolidation, and now the USDA is asking consumers to jeopardize their health. 
Brownfield Ag News has reported that during the week ending February 24th, pork and beef export sales skyrocketed. Pork sales topped 42,000 tons, an increase of almost 60% from the previous week, led by strong demand from Mexico and China. Beef sales hit 24,000 tons, up more than 60% from the week before, thanks to South Korea. Net pork sales totaled 42,200 tons, 59% higher than the week before and 80% above the four-week average. Net beef sales totaled 23,800 tons, an increase of 64% week over week and 23% above the four-week average. Reuters has reported that on Friday, CME live cattle futures dropped to a six-month low and feeder cattle hit a nine-month low. According to commodity brokers, follow-through selling pushed cattle contracts down after a string of losses in the market and recent weakness in wholesale beef prices and cash and cash cattle trading also weighed heavy on the futures. As expected, the livestock complex came under further, excuse me, under further pressure from uncertainty over the Ukraine-Russia crisis, which pushed some traders to the sidelines. We continue to see the grain futures skyrocket. There's no end in sight, it feels like. They're just up, 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 which has many worried about uh, increased production costs for livestock producers. And finally, Bloomberg has reported that, as I just talked about with uh, the situation in Ukraine and the farmer over in Ukraine basically pleading with everyone about the situation that he is facing, um, Bloomberg has reported that we have seen, of course, we have seen food prices increase in recent months, but it hasn't been anything that will essentially knock you over. It's apparent, but it's nothing terrible. But now that Russia has invaded Ukraine, um, we're about to see prices soar to unseen heights. In the month of February, global food prices jumped to an all-time record, according to the United Nations. In the past week, as we all saw, CME wheat, CME wheat increased 40% to a 14-year high. Russia and Ukraine together account for a quarter of global grains trade. Their absence might possibly take the global hunger crisis to levels beyond anything we've seen before. So if you want bread or spaghetti or anything that has grains, I suggest you go out and buy it today. That is all I have for you guys this morning. I hope you all had a great weekend. Um, we had some thunderstorms here on Saturday around noon, and then it snowed all afternoon. And by the end of the day, we ended up with about a foot of snow. Probably the best moisture that we have had in, golly, five to six months. Quite a blessing. I've never been so excited for a foot of snow, but it sure is fantastic. I hope you all have a wonderful Monday. I'll catch you later.